With all this discourse going on around Unreal Engine 5 being absolutely useless when it comes to optimization, I figured it was about time to see how far we could take things down by throwing this engine up against the pitiful GT1010. Now when it comes to the GT1010 there are already two videos on the two variants of this card that do exist out there and we've covered both of them pretty thoroughly. And it's not exactly a great card and it does have some rather underwhelming specifications. It is however based on the Pascal architecture at least which should give it some modern advantages but nothing all too modern in 2025 and it does have 256 shaders, 16 TMUs, 8 ROPs, you get the idea it's not exactly a powerful card, it's a cut down GT1030. Although to give us a fighting chance we are using the GDDR5 version that was actually substantially quicker than the normal version. Nothing powerful but it was something. Not that it's going to do much because we only have 2GB of VRAM running through a measly 64 bit memory bus. So this is about as basic as it gets for a modern display adapter. And it didn't feel fair to use the RTX 4010 I got from China because that isn't really a proper retail card. Whereas despite this thing being rare, well it is at least real. And the idea is today we are going to be running Oblivion Remastered because it's one of those Unreal Engine 5 games that I've actually got a decent chunk of experience with across multiple cards and nothing about its performance makes sense and the part that doesn't make sense is the Unreal Engine part. Realistically what it does ask for is you need to be running Windows 10, that's not a problem, you need to have a decent Ryzen CPU or at least a Coffee Lake i7 so if you're thinking 6 cores or higher, 16 gigs of RAM, not a problem as well. And for the graphics card, well this is the part that matters. You need an RX 5700 or an Nvidia GeForce 1070 Ti. Now these are the official minimum requirements from Bethesda themselves and realistically I can tell you that these are a complete load of nonsense. CPU wise we've ran this just about okay on a Core i3 Sandy Bridge, I mean it wasn't exactly what I'd call playable, but you were getting 15 to 30 FPS after waiting 2 hours for it to load, so you can actually play this game on far worse hardware CPU wise. And when it comes to the graphics card, well even then we've seen this game perfectly playable with medium settings on an RX 480 which is a 30 quid graphics card now. Where we did see it start to struggle was with older cards like the R9 Nano and other Fury cards. Really it mostly struggles with the DirectX 12 version required which means that most older GCN cards are out and most older Nvidia cards are out. So when it comes to the weakest card that will probably launch this, well I'd be willing to put good money that the GT 1010 is probably one of the weakest cards that you can get it to launch on so we've definitely managed to give ourselves a bit of a challenge today. And what is the experience like out of the box? Well the game does default to the lowest settings in the 720p resolution which is about what you'd expect for a weak low end display adapter and when you get in game you are seeing anywhere from 2 to 5 FPS outdoors with the very lowest of settings. It doesn't look great and you can just about make out what's happening, but there's so much input delay and latency that you can't really control the game and if you stay in game long enough, well I don't know why you'd want to, but it will eventually just crash. There's nothing you can do to get around this, I did try tweaking around with a few settings, turning off a few things that it left on, but the performance stays about the same. 2 to 5 FPS outdoors with the very lowest settings and not much of an improvement when you go inside a cave or house. So yeah, out of the box GT1010, already we're struggling. So we've already established we're as low as we can go with the settings in game, is there anything we can do maybe outside the game to increase our performance? Well I did try and overclock things as far as they can go, even down to the tiniest 1 MHz increases to the memory and core clocks, anything just to eke out some extra performance. And things did actually respond really well to an overclock here, I mean we saw things now running at 7 to 8 FPS which is a 100% increase in the performance of the frame rate and it still didn't make much change to anything else. I mean there was still loads of input latency and it still crashed. I mean you could add or change other things like adding FSO or Intel XCSS and it made no difference other than make the game look blurry and your frame rate stayed the same because frankly this card is too weak to handle the overheads. But that's about where your average person would give up. Oh no, I can't play this game on my GT1010. Clearly the Unreal Engine is absolutely awful and that's all there is to blame. 
But no, turns out Unreal Engine, despite all its faults, does actually come with config files. And it doesn't exactly make this the easiest experience in the world, but it is actually a bit like the Source Engine, where you can add and change commands that don't necessarily exist in the game, but when you change them at an engine level, well, the game takes on the settings you've applied. You just have to make sure they're read-only and the game doesn't try to overwrite them. So after a while, I was researching what other people have been up to, how the Unreal Engine config file works, and I was able to make quite a few big changes, which did help. I mean, they didn't help anywhere near as much as I thought they should do, but we were actually able to get Oblivion looking worse than it was to eke out some better frame rates. The first thing to go, force lumen ray tracing. That is a no-go here, and that seemed to be the thing that was causing our crashes. So that ray tracing aspect, didn't matter if it was software or hardware, it's not going to run well here. That's gone. I did as much as possible to disable shadows, which in turn disables nanite, which has a major performance issue on these older NVIDIA cards, and it did actually help us eke back a decent chunk of performance. I was also able to get rid of some of the foliage using LOD commands. You can't just turn them off, you have to manually try and make the LOD as minuscule as possible while it's still registering as an effect. And the same went with trees, characters, all the small details, those were all gone. And the big one was manually changing around the resolution commands. See, it doesn't like this, this whole game doesn't like it when you try and scale things yourself. You can't just make the Windows resolution smaller and try and get it to launch because it will give you a fatal error and crash. But what you can do is scale what the actual engine is rendering onto that window. So we managed to get things down to below PlayStation 1 resolutions. We had it the lowest I could actually get the game to launch with, which was 128 by 72 pixels. And there we had it. This is the most optimized version of the Unreal 5 engine, because you could probably take this config file and apply it to every other game that it runs on, and you will get it looking like this. So just how playable is Oblivion Remastered, and by extension, the Unreal 5 engine, running like this? Right, so after a couple of days getting to grips with the Unreal engine, we have finally got Oblivion Remastered running on the GT 1010. Now, it's taken quite a while to get here, and... Turns out, uh, Unreal Engine 5 is uh, is pr pretty useless, actually, when it comes to scalability, but we have nearly got the game running between 15 and 30 FPS, even when you're outdoors. Now, there's a couple of things missing, namely, shadows are gone. Uh, there are very few things in terms of draw distance actually running. There's as much foliage gone as completely possible. And the big one you're probably noticing quite a lot is the game is now running in the amazing resolution of 128 by 72 pixels, which is as low as I could possibly get it. Now, some of you are probably wondering, why aren't we using FSR or one of those versions, DLSS or frame generation? Well, I tried, and the performance was not only worse, but it actually looked even worse than this. So the game is actually somewhat controllable, which is the best bit. I mean, the frame pacing is downright terrible, and it's difficult to make out what you're actually looking at, but it does go to show that you can make this game almost run on a GT 1010. It's not necessarily a good thing, and there's some combat going on right here. I don't know if we can get a shot in, because I can't actually tell who's on our side or not. Oh, no, there he is. There he is. Let's see. Oh, he, he's already... He's already been defeated. Why don't we go to a town or city, though, and see just how it's running in the towns or the cities? Because I'm a little bit curious what performance is like over there. Now, it is worth me noting that generally this game does require 6 gigabytes of VRAM, even with these incredibly low settings. The main performance benefit we did gain was actually from overclocking the graphics card itself. Turns out the Unreal Engine 5 tweaks you can do only at most make the frame rate a little bit more stable and stop the game from crashing. But once again, navigation does prove to be a little bit difficult, but then again, this is the way the game is meant to be played on low-end graphics cards. Uh, what happens when we try and go into somewhere? Is performance any better indoors? I have done a little bit of testing beforehand, and performance did seem like we were getting nearly 60 FPS in some places. So yes, when you go indoors, performance is actually quite a lot better. It's not necessarily what I'd call great, but we are hitting 60 FPS with these settings. 
Now you can turn the resolution up from this, but the game will eventually crash at some point. And this is actually the easiest it's been to actually see what the game's doing. I mean, there's not much detail in uh, people's faces or the buildings or the surrounding areas. But this is, this is some of the best performance we've seen. Now, there's no ray tracing running, there's no lumen running. Uh, anything that has any sort of performance hit is gone. And this, this isn't actually too bad at all. Can we see what it looks like at daytime, maybe? That might be quite nice. See what happens when we change it to daytime. Maybe we can get some of the nice lighting effects that uh, I really did appreciate in the uh, remaster of Oblivion. I thought they looked quite nice. Oh, we crashing? No, we aren't crashing, but we are in daytime now. Let's see, what happens when we uh, we pop back outdoors? Does performance just magically work better now that we've seen 60 FPS? The card is, of course, working overtime, but this is not a great graphics card to begin with. Well, we're back down to 8 FPS during the daytime, and visibility is suffering greatly. I'm, I'm struggling to see anything. This is almost impossible. This is, oh, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is beautiful. <laughs> this is so bad. I'm trying to keep it together. This, honestly, I'm trying to think of a best way of explaining this. Unreal Engine 5 may be the least scalable engine I've ever used. You can tweak it down for days, learning what all the individual settings do, going back, resetting, trying it again, measuring your frame rate, and in the end, this is what you end up with. You end up with something that looks this bad in 2025. Now, keep in mind, the GT 1010 is not a good graphics card, but it can at least run GTA 5 and 1080p with okay-ish settings. You know, it's not actually that terrible as a graphics card compared to some other things. You'd expect the game to be tweaked down. Like a good example, running GTA 5 on a GT 210, which is probably a good equivalent, you can at least see what you're doing this is appalling. What if we try and start some combat? What happens there? I, 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 well, we can just about make out what's happening. The frame rate is stable enough to be controllable, which is the main thing that we got away from this. Oh, the guards. We violated the law. Uh, can we just resist arrest? See how bad the frame rate's actually gonna get in combat? Does it get worse? Oh, this is, this is an experience. What's third person like? Oh, third person's a little bit better. It's a bit easier to see what you're doing when you're zoomed out. It means the pixels are friendlier. I can't tell what some of these black dots are meant to be. I don't know if they're meant to be effects that we just couldn't get rid of. But, well, he's shooting a bow and arrow. There's some sort of chaos going on over here. There's a nice blob occurring. Thing is, I'm going to have to put a screenshot of this somewhere in the thumbnail, and it's probably going to be this, where you can't even really tell what I'm doing. But yes, this is uh, Oblivion Remastered on the GT to, uh, GT 1010. This is as good as it gets. So I hope this was as underwhelming for you as it was for me. I didn't know the game could look this bad, so at least we've seen something out of this. Oh, oh, this is this is this is just awful. Well, thank you, and. Uh, I'm just going to try normal Oblivion real quick just to see what that looked like because I'm curious how it runs the original because maybe that's a better idea. And Mazoga the Orc is dead. We will now never learn the story of Mazoga. How very sad. So just in case anyone was wondering how the original Oblivion works, well, I just launched it with the default settings which was high in 720p with VSync enabled and it runs perfectly fine. So, the performance difference between the original and the remaster is very, very high, given that we've still got 50% of our graphics card left over from this. And this is with high settings, and we could probably turn the resolution up to probably over 1080p and still see the game be playable. So, uh, not exactly great news for the remaster there in terms of scalability. I know the original Oblivion is really scalable, and I've been meaning to do some challenges, scaling this down onto maybe as low as 8 megabytes of VRAM. I think it could be done. But that's a topic for another day. All we need to know is, well, at least it works here, which it doesn't, over on the remaster.
Well, it did work, it just uh, wasn't running at 60 FPS with graphics that you could tell what was happening. And what does this go to prove? Well, it does prove that Unreal Engine 5 has some ridiculously high requirements, at least in the form that we've got it here with Oblivion Remastered, which I've actually found to be one of the better optimized titles out there, and it just doesn't scale well. I mean, I'm used to the scalability of some of those older engines, takes the Source Engine, the Rage Engine, and we've been doing some of those in our previous challenges, and we've got those things scaled so far back that we had them running on cards they didn't even support. And it worked okay. I mean, sometimes, yes, there were issues, but you could at least get a degree of performance out of it. But when it comes to the Unreal Engine, it just seems like it wants more VRAM and it wants more power, and you can disable a ton of the effects that you think are causing it, and it just doesn't give you the performance increase you think it should. I mean, yes, we fixed the crashing, but it didn't exactly make it a playable experience. I mean, yes, maybe if you squint hard enough and played in a small enough window, you could just about make out what was going on, but I think it marks the bit of an end of an era, at least when it comes to this engine and this side of games, that you aren't going to be able to tweak them down to optimize them, in a sense, for hardware that they weren't initially designed for. I mean, don't get me wrong, we've seen this run perfectly fine on RX 480s and almost playable on an R9 Fury, but it doesn't change the fact that this engine, and this game by extension, is just a bit of a resource hog for seemingly no reason. Even with everything turned off and such a minuscule resolution, it just wants power that it doesn't need and VRAM that it can't have. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed how ridiculous this challenge was. I've been a bit scared to look into the side of Unreal Engine, but with everyone talking about it right now, I figured, right, it's time to learn how we tweak this thing down. At least we can use it for other videos that are maybe on cards that are a bit more powerful. Either way, thank you very much for watching, and good night.